Okay, are we coming to the last part of our four-part series in which we're looking at the gospel readings for September, this September, which come from the cycle, a cycle in the Gospel of Matthew. When we look at the beginning of the 20th chapter of Matthew when we come to this magnificent parable of the vineyard. Of course, the, vine the parable is this. There's a marketplace where workers go to be hired. And you'll see that even today in certain countries. They wait for someone who needs someone for odd jobs. and They'll come and recruit them and take them out. So the landowner, the vineyard owner, comes early morning, takes them. Doesn't have enough yet, comes in the middle of the morning, takes them. Noon, he takes some more. Middle of the afternoon, and then even comes few hours before dark and he still needs more help to get the crop in. He takes them. Now the crux of the parable is of course is that at the end of the day the owner of the vineyard pays that agreed on wage to everyone. He starts with those that only worked a few hours and pays them and you can just see the others. Oh boy look at that he gave them a hundred dollars. I bet you we get a hundred and fifty. I bet you we get 200. Look at that. But he had agreed with them for 100. And rather than be glad that they had work, rather than rejoicing in the good fortune of all who had shared that work with them, and that the job had got done, they turn in jealousy and they start to murmur. And of course, the owner of the vineyard who is, after all, a stand-in for God the Father, says, have I not agreed with you for this amount, all of you? If I decide to give those who've only worked a few hours the same amount as agreed upon, as those who work the whole day in the heat of the sun, is it not my money? Is it not mine to do with as I wish? God has given us so much. Do we look with envy on those who seem to have merited eternal rewards only late in life? Or do we rejoice with them to see that we will have more company in the forgiveness of God? Do we stand in rejection of those whom God has chosen to forgive, and to forgive. Do we not extend that same reward in our own hearts to those who have been given a reward by God? It is a sin against charity to say that God should not do this or do that. Well, God's justice is covered by his charity. One could say, oh, he or she worked only a couple hours. They should only get a couple of hours wages. And, and those who work 12 hours should get more. Yet if you are in agreement that everything is owed to God, everything, then we have no role to judge who he chooses to give what to. Rather, we should rejoice in the good fortune of those around us. It is the antithesis of charity to sulk and be downcast about the good fortune of others. It is, even is something that smacks of the diabolical itself. For Satan wails and weeps at the good fortune of mankind and seeks to draw them away from it. It is the same sin that the elder brother had, who when the father forgives the prodigal son, the older son refuses to join in the celebration. You and I are called to a celebration. We are called to a time of rejoicing. Let us not worry or be preoccupied with what God chooses to give to others. Let us rejoice in what we have been given. And also, in charity, 
rejoice in the gifts that God has showered on those around us, even those for whom we have no particular affinity, maybe even especially those people. For it is in doing so that we partake of the divine. It is in doing so that we choose to be like God, the ultimate giver of all good things.